Hello everyone, it's Magdalena Wolf of Clients. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, a review of a book that many of you might find very interesting. I get a lot of questions about books in English about Slavic magic, Slavic beliefs, pagan beliefs, and I'm always uh, uncertain what to answer, but from now on I will be recommending this. Uh, <laughs> okay, that was a spoiler for this review. Anyway, when I saw this book on, appear on the internet, uh, I got very interested and I actually contacted the um, publisher, I contacted Llewellyn, uh, whether they would send me a review copy. So this is a copy that I got from the publisher. They kindly sent me even more things. I already did a review of the steampunk Lenormand. It's here on my channel. So yeah, thank you so much, Llewellyn. The title is Baba Yaga's Book of Witchcraft, Slavic Magic from the Witch of the Woods by Madame Pamita. And... I knew uh, Madame Pamita from YouTube. I mean, I knew her channel, her videos. She makes a lot of video about practical magic. Uh, oh, a disclaimer. Me, <laughs> I am reviewing this book not as a, not really as a magic practitioner. I identify more as a pagan, less as a witch if you know what I mean. So I'm not a specialist here and I won't be judging this book from the um, magic practitioner's perspective. I will be judging this book from a perspective of a Slavic pagan and a Polish person, <laughs> generally. And, and also someone who specializes in Slavic beliefs as such. So, from what I understand, she uh, practices hoodoo, and here is her picture, and she has a Ukrainian ancestry. Her grandmother was Ukrainian, and uh, what I like about this book, that it really is Slavic. I've seen some books on uh, the topic of Slavic magic, but the problem was they, they were in Slavic and here you cannot say this about this book. It is all based on the beliefs that I know from my own culture and my own research and it delights me. So maybe I will show you the... Oh, it's, it's very beautiful. It's beautifully designed, I must say. Uh, yeah, there's an index. I love when a book has an index. But where is the, 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 the contents part? Right, the contents are here. So what do we have here? First of all, you get this feel of the Slavic tradition by the author using Ukrainian words. And I must tell you, Ukrainian is extremely um, understandable for Polish people. These are very closely related languages. So most of these I just understand because I am Polish and because they also appear in Polish traditions. Okay, so we get embroidery, um, the... Motanka, I have I have a video on making Motanka. Uh, so what I really liked is already here I found things that I practiced myself before uh, reading this book. Uh, there is a chapter about crossroads, then about um, magical creatures or spirits of nature. Um, guardian spirits of the house, how to get into a relationship with them, and so on and so forth. Everything based on Slavic traditions. 
So this is this is how it should be. I applaud. <laughs> I approve. I think that the culture, if you're interested in, uh, in Slavic magic, the first step is to actually immerse yourself into the culture. This is the first step to, to feel this magic, actually. So this is, this is great. And then the structure of the book is very interesting because um, all of the chapters are connected with a folk tale. It's a folk tale um, about Vasilna. In the Russian version, it's Vasilisa. Maybe you've heard of her. There's this story in uh, Clarissa Pinkola Estes's uh, Running with the Wolves. It is there. And all of the topics that appear here somehow appear in this story. So first... Uh, you can read it, you probably don't have to read it, it depends. You also do, don't have to read everything in order, I think. It's just a, a book you can come back to and read something later. But of obviously the story starts here and ends there. Then you get uh, something like Baba Yaga is speaking to you and she's explaining about the topic of the chapter. And then uh, the author herself is sharing her own experience, also from her childhood, what her grandmother did. And I, I absolutely love it because this is exactly how these traditions work. They come like from generation to generation and this is something that you uh, cannot build in one day, right? It's something that grew for uh, hundreds and thousands of years and we, we have it today because it grew for so, such a long time. Um, yeah, this, there is a very important thing here. I often say it in my videos, but the importance of ancestor worship and relationship with them in Slavic tradition. This is something very, very deep. And uh, she writes about it here in the chapter about Domovik, which is uh, um, house, the spirit of the house. I feel like the she covers a lot of important uh, topics here. What I also like is that uh, you get a very practical advice. Like, you're a be complete beginner. Where do you start? What do you do? How can you, for example, for creating this Motanka doll, you get a list of supplies and what I absolutely adore, you even get the size of the, here, here's like a picture, how you do it, but you even get the, the approximate size of the pieces that you will need. This is such a great move, such a great choice to, to make when writing a book. Because when you're, when you're doing this for the first time ever, um, you have no idea what size the fabric should be and it it will be so much easier if you have some starting point. You can prepare your stuff and do your your job. <laughs> You're working. So I really I really love the practical side here. There are um there are texts you can use when uh doing your working or starting a relationship with a spirit of the house and others. So again, very practical. Of course, you can uh, then change it, adapt it, but you have a starting point. This is what this book is, I think. This is, this is a great starting point 
from here you get like you get the basics and then you can you know explore <laughs> what else is here what do i have here oh yeah <laughs> i marked this because uh this is so me it says utility beauty and magic so for ukrainians in the past every object they touched would be useful beautiful and imbued with magic and this is exactly how I like my things to be as well. I like them to to be practical, but at the same time, they need to be uh, something special, something different, something that I have a memory about, or something that just pleases my senses. And the magic, as I said, is, is those good memories and those good emotions that stir inside me so yeah this is very me and i'm a slav <laughs> yeah so well this is very interesting because you know i'm still learning about stuff i know more about deities and supernatural beings less about the practical magic as i said before so it was very interesting for me and it's says about salt so i was watching some youtube video in polish it was about reading playing cards actually but the the youtuber mentioned uh thursday salt and i never heard about it before but i watched it it was interesting to me and then i opened this book and it says thursday salt and i'm like wow <laughs> And so it is with many things. I mean, not that I didn't know, and, and here I see them, but they check out. These things here are really based on Slavic traditions. They are not made up, I guarantee you. Well, maybe there is something that you heard differently, and here is a different version. But what I really treasure here, there are no made up stories here there is a bibliography here which is great also an index a bibliography so you can you know you can explore right because it um, has a lot of english books i mean books in english here so there is a lot of field to explore right yeah then you also get a list of plants and their meanings and again these are legit i mean these are the plants that i know that are important uh, important in slavic traditions in uh, slavic magic workings so it is it is great uh, to have these then again, there is uh, magical color correspondences. Mm, well, <laughs> with this, I, I won't like argue. I, I am not sure whether these are so uh, deeply rooted in the tradition, but again, it's still helpful to, to start with something and even think about whether these colors mean this to you, right? Certainly uh, the most important color in Slavic tradition is red, <laughs> red thread. It is a protective color. That's why Slavic embroidery uses so much red. It is supposed to protect you to invoke the power of the sun, of, of fire, and for example, when a baby is born, we put a, a red thread, a red bracelet on their little wrist, simply to protect them against stuff, <laughs> mostly about uh, from the evil eye, so nobody like looks at, at your child and does anything to them 
on purpose or even accidentally. There's a glossary, which I also love because um, the author uses a lot of Slavic words. And this is important. Again, this is a part of the culture, the language. So to know, to understand those words is a very important thing. And it was, again, fascinating for me because I understand almost everything. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah, there was one uh, complaint I have. So as, uh, well, you cannot say I said only good things about this book. <laughs> so there was something. As I said, it's very practical. But in the chapter about uh, embroidery, about stitching, uh, it gives you those oh, sorry traditional symbols and their meaning. But uh, as a person who does cross-stitch myself, I can tell you uh, these are kind of useless when you... Uh, if you just want to um, replicate these, if you want to just get inspired and design it yourself, well, then this is kind of helpful. However, uh, you you have to be more advanced in stitching to design your own pictures, your own projects. So again, what I would do, first of all, would be put a grid here. It, so you can count the stitches on the grid and make them much bigger. You you need a magnifying glass to see these stitches, which is really not helpful. This one is better, but again, no grid. It is a lot of work. If you want to stitch this, you first need to uh, take a pencil and make a grid for yourself here. And then you can start stitching. With this, uh, this is kind of impossible. You need to look at this and try to redraw it on a gridded paper. So this is my complaint. This is not practical from um, stitching stitcher's point of view. Other than that, I love this book. So to sum up, I think this book is for everyone who would like to learn about Slavic folk magic. It is a great book. It's, um, its structure is very well thought out. It's very clear and the book is very helpful. It is a great resource for Slavic pagans as well because it tells you about relationships with uh, for example, Domovik, which is the house spirit. So it's a Domovik in your house is a, usually a very important part of the practice for Slavic pagans. Also, it tells you about relationships with uh, spirits of nature, such as Leshe, so the um, lord of the forest, with Rusauki, which are uh, goddesses uh, related to water and uh, nature, about making pisanki, so those decorated eggs that we make in spring. You must know, if people stop making pisanki, the world will end. <laughs> this, is, this is what the tradition says. So it's very, very important. And it's great that there is a, a whole chapter about them. I cannot find it right now. But yeah, so for Slavic pagans to give them knowledge and practical advice for their practice. I think the author put a lot of her heart here. She gave um, some of her personal perspective. Um, you do not have to agree with, with her perspective, but still uh, she gives you a base for your own version, for your own practice. 
And I would say this is the best book in English I saw uh, uh, on the market on the topic of Slavic magic. I also spoke with some Polish witches because, as I said, I'm reviewing this book from a perspective of someone knowledgeable in Slavic mythology and traditions, not as a really practicing witch. So I heard that, uh, like an op opinion, that uh, this book is a bit basic, that it is best to learn from original uh, sources in Slavic languages. However, when you're a beginner, when you're just starting and you know and you do not know, do not speak any Slavic language. This is, uh, yeah, this is the best you can get. And again, a great starting point. And I really am happy that Slavic culture here was treated with respect, with love, and was presented really well. So thank you so much. Uh, Madame Pamita for creating such a wonderful book. Thank you, Llewellyn, for uh, publishing it and for sending me a review copy. Uh, I'm very grateful. It's it's a book I will be coming back to. And yeah, it took me some time to make this review, but I, I really did want to, you know, talk about the contents here. <laughs> so I had to prepare. Also, I had a quite busy time. I have just finished the uh, editing process of my newest Polish novel, so you know, it was intense. And, oh, I wanted to show you something. When we are talking about cross-stitch, I'm stitching a Baba Yaga piece. How cute is this? How cute! See, I got uh, this set as a present from my friend it is like everything. There's a pattern, there are uh, threads here, they are hand dyed, so they are, uh, you know, a bit variegated. And there is this uh, needle holder, a magnet with Baba Yaga's hat. See? So, yeah, I thought. You might want to see this or just, I maybe just wanted to brag that I have something so, so pretty. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. And please let me know, is it a book that you would like to read? Um, do you know any other book on, uh, on this topic that you think is uh, good and interesting? Because, you know, I mostly read things in Polish things translated, uh, written in Polish and translated into Polish from Slavic languages. I do not read so many English books on, on the topic of Slavic traditions, so if there is something I missed, I would love to hear about it. And have a lovely day. Bye!